Today I want to talk about what might be the most versatile, pocketable flashlight that I've ever encountered, and that is the Thrunite BSS V4. So this flashlight is one that I have, well, I just never thought of buying myself because I always had this picture of it being probably the most aggressive version of a flashlight because all the pictures that they show is this, just like that. Sorry. And this doesn't, one, doesn't look very comfortable to carry in the pocket. And two, um, I'm going to get some looks and probably get denied entry if I start walking around with a flashlight like this. What I didn't realize is that this strike bezel is completely removable and is a big part of what makes this flashlight so versatile. So if you're into that, you have that strike bezel. And if you want to conceal it or keep it, you know, PC as it were, you could wear it as a ring if you choose to. I can just about fit it on my middle finger. But you don't necessarily need to keep this attached to the flashlight. Alternatively, it comes with another really amazing add-on. And it's actually something I never would have thought I needed until I started carrying it. And that is this. This is a red filter. So it actually, not only is it a red filter, but it, it just, it, it's more than that. It's, it's definitely a different version of red than I'm used to. Maybe somebody can explain it to me. But it really and truly does work at maintaining your night vision much better than other, you know, like plastic filters. There's something going on here. And uh, it also dims the light as well. So you can leave this on, which is what I usually do. And then if needed, you can take it off for high output later at, at nighttime. Now, let's go into the user interface because it's very, very important. It's one of the other things that if I had known about would probably have gotten me to purchase this, you know, a while ago. And full disclosure, this was actually sent to me by ThruNight. Otherwise, I may never have purchased it. So the tail switch only does one thing, and that is access the maximum output. And without the filter, it is a whopping, what is it, 2,500 lumens. In fact, 2523. And uh, that is a lot of output. It's going to generate a lot of heat. So it only runs for about two minutes before dropping to 600 lumens, but that's going to be enough for most people in that situation where you need so much light. Now, the thing I like the most about this is it's not just a, I hate the word tactical, I'm going to not use it. Uh, it. It's not just an aggressive flashlight. It also has very usable daily functionality. Daily? No, that's not the right way to say it. You get my point, though. It's also good for daily use. And it starts with the fact that the side switch lets you access the moonlight mode directly. This is something that is true on the Warrior Mini 2 from Olight, and I just absolutely love it. In fact, many of the lights that they have has the same user interface. I don't want to blow out my vision because I don't know what setting the flashlight is on. And if they have memory, I always want to have a way to get to the lowest output without having to think about what setting I'm in. So by doing this, by hole pressing, I can get that lowest output setting. Now, if I click one time, it will go to whatever the saved setting is. And then if I hold press from there, I can cycle through the outputs. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, which is perfect. Three outputs in the middle and one on either side. You have turbo, high, medium, low, and moonlight. So you can quick access to moonlight, quick access to turbo, and then whatever of the three settings you set or have the last time you used it, will come on with just a single press. Now, that's all really, really good. Um, the last thing we'll talk about that's really good is both the quality and this clip. Very, very secure and very, very strong. And I like that because it is not the lightest flashlight in the world. In fact, I'm gonna, let me just look this up. The um, weight of this is 91 grams. So it's not light, but it's not heavy either. Now, um, that kind of finishes up the things I really, really like. There are a couple of things that I think are, I think they could be tweaked just a little bit. Excuse me. The first one has to do with this tail switch. So this is a very 
strong press. Like it, it's actually quite a strong spring to get the full press and click. And because of how high these guards are, which is designed to help a tail stand, it's if you don't ex get it exactly right, like if you come over the top like this, you may have a hard time actually getting that button fully pressed. That could be a positive or negative depending on who you are. But in my opinion, if it's meant to be kind of a panic, I need the button, I don't want anything to impede it. So I, I really would like these um, lanyard ring pieces to be removed. And for me personally, I'm actually gonna cut them off because I'm never using a lanyard with this, but I want that button to be as proud as possible. That's my personal preference. The other thing in the reverse is true here on the side switch. I feel like this button is a little bit too proud. Now, it does pass my pressured rubbing test. Like I'm, pre I'm pressing pretty hard and it's still not turning on, which is good. It's actually a very long press to get this to work, so that's great. But if they had recessed it just, well, the distance of this button, and then I had to press it in, then it would never accidentally come on. And I think that would be really helpful. It does have a lockout, just so you know. Not that I ever suggest using it for a flashlight like this, but if you turn it on with the moonlight, wait, I think this is how you work. Give me a second. Here we go. So long press to turn it on and moonlight, long press again, locks it out with the red light, and then long press again, turns it back on. I just wasn't pressing hard enough. So there is a nice amount of pressure for the side switch. But I wish it was just a little bit recessed. This is really the only things I can nitpick with this flashlight. The only other, well, not a small thing, but an important thing is that although the micro USB charging port is fine and it's IPX8 waterproof total, this should be USB Type-C. I think we're done with the micro USB, please. Please stop doing that. If version 5 does not have USB Type-C, I'll be very, very disappointed but it's still fine. And the other benefit you get over some of these other flashlights, like the Warrior Mini 2, is you have a non-proprietary battery. So this will use a, what is basically a standard 18650. So any 18650 will work, which means you can charge them in a bay charger and swap them out really quickly. And that is my preferred way with this. I don't ever use these charging cables unless in an emergency anyway. And if I am, I wanna have it be the same one that my phone is capable of using. So USB Type-C, please. As far as batteries are concerned, I much prefer, prefer having a spare battery in the charging bay and just going, swap them out, put it back in, and call it a day. And once I do that, then I don't have to wait around for it to charge. That is the one major downside I have with the Olight Warrior Mini 2. This is an apt comparison, I think, in my opinion, because in the carry, actually carrying it, it's very, very similar. If you look, if I line up the clips, there actually is more of the Olight in my pocket than the Thrunite, which is kind of interesting. And in, when I carry them, they don't feel all that different. In fact, occasionally because there's more to kind of distribute the shape, I actually sometimes feel like this is a more comfortable flashlight to carry, which is really weird. Now, last thing I want to talk about, another big advantage of the Thrunite here besides the price, which we'll get into, is the fact that rubber buttons like this one are less prone to dust, sand, and grime. The one issue that I have with the Warrior Mini or any of the Olights that have this tile of button, it is really nice to actuate, but if sand or grit gets in between these two pieces, it can seriously hamper your ability to press that button. And because of that, if you're really working environments where you have a lot of dirt and grime, do not get an Olight. I, I love them. They're wonderful in a day-to-day -day carry. But if you seriously find yourself like in the mud, in the sand, do not buy an Olight. Because the problem with this is not a small thing. And because it is the part that is sticking out of your pocket, it's the one most likely to get stuff all over. Another advantage of this. So there's definitely some disadvantages. Obviously, it's a lot longer and a little bit heavier. But there's a significant uh, advantage when it comes to functionality. 
You're not going to be able to clip it to a hat. So that's one thing. But do you need it when it's able to do so much more using standardized fuels, using uh, a charging cable that's a little bit more readily available, having different varieties of attachments, you know, and that kind of thing. And the price. Um, I don't have the exact numbers currently is the release of this video, but I'll put it right here and show you a picture. This is a significant drop in price compared to the Olight. So when you combine the fact that it is an easier to replace fuel, it has that versatility, it has the ability to be charged with a cable on the fly, it's a very compelling option, I think, for a lot of people. This, I would actually put these on par with each other in completely you know, different categories, maybe. Similar, but there's some advantages here, like with the sensor, there's some advantages here. I like them. I like them both, but the, this one surprises me. I would never have expected this to be a consideration for a daily carry, and now I'm finding that it's actually, more often than not, exactly what I'm looking for. So that's kind of all I have to say about the BSS V4. I think I would, I would like to see those improvements in the fifth version. USB Type-C, um, maybe removing these would be great. That's just my personal preference, and maybe recessing the button slightly. Um, other than that, they have nailed this light. This is a fantastic light. Well done through night. So thanks for your time. I appreciate it. We'll be back with another review and more content in the near future. Have a good one.